was going to be on zinc. But I thought, in light of what happened yesterday, this talk on aging and women's hormones is much more provocative. It's much, much more arousing, much more confrontational. And I think that's what we get you going on a Sunday morning. So is that okay to do aging and female hormones? Yeah? You in the mood? Most, I just... I will do zinc at the end. I'll, I'll, I'll put zinc in the, in, the, in the conversation. Don't worry. I just see that most of the people I had a, a sort of little battle with yesterday aren't here today. They chickened out. That's sad. Now, when you look after anybody's health, before you go to hormones, before you give them hormones, you have to look at their diet, their digestive system, making sure they have nutrients in sufficiency and in balance, like fatty acids, amino acids, vitamins and minerals, and then you go to hormones. So only when you've done the first three things can you then give someone hormones. Because if someone comes to you and they complain of fatigue and a poor memory and whatever else they're complaining of, and you just measure their hormones, and you say to them, your hormones are low, I'm going to give you hormones. And you give them hormones and a month or two later they come back to you and they say, I'm still fatigued and I still can't remember and I still can't get a good erection. Then what are you going to do then? Just give them more hormones. You see? You've got nowhere to go. And then you mention things like physiologic and synergy and we're making sure your hormones are physiologic. But how, do, how can you talk physiologic with hormones? You can't. Because in the brain, in your brain, different parts of the brain make different amounts of estrogen. Estrogen is also made in your breasts. Estrogen is made in your adrenal glands. So whatever test you do, be it a urine test or a blood test or a saliva test, you cannot really tell from that test what is going on physiologically with that person. So to say the word physiologic is not scientific. It's just marketing. It makes you look to the patient as if you know what's going on, but we don't. DHEA and vitamin D are also made in different parts of the body. Vitamin D is made locally. DHEA is made in the brain. It's made by the adrenal glands. Melatonin, made all over the place, made, made in the eyes, in the gut, in the brain. How can you tell from any test where someone's melatonin's at, someone's DHEA is at, someone's estrogen is at? You can't. You can't tell. So you've got to do those three things before you do hormones. Hormones need energy, ATP. And to make ATP, you need the Krebs cycle. And the Krebs cycle works with nutrients. It works with iron and copper and zinc and B vitamins and manganese. So you need to measure all those things. You have to measure them. You have to assess them before you assess hormones. Otherwise, you run into problems. Because female hormones can cause cancer. And it's not a good look to give your patients cancer. They don't like that sort of thing. And all of them can. And here's a test which shows that they measured female hormones, measured women's hormones. And they found that women with high levels of hormones in their blood have a greater risk of cancer. And these are all the female hormones, every single one, estradiol, testosterone, DHEA, estrone, all of those have been associated with cancer, every single one. Okay? That's what that study showed. And we used to think, we used to think that estrogen does not initiate breast cancer. We used to think that you have cancer cells, then you give a woman estrogen, and estrogen stimulates the growth of those cancer cells. Wrong. Wrong. Estrogen actually initiates breast cancer. This is an in vitro study in which they show that estrogen and 2-hydroxyestrogen, the so-called safe estrogen, and 4-hydroxyestrogen actually initiate breast cancer. They start it off. So you've got to be very, very careful with estrogen. All types of estrogen. And they think it works by the estrogen receptor alpha complex. And once estrogen docks on that, you have an anti-apoptotic process going on, and that stimulates cancer cell growth. Okay? 
And estrogen receptor beta is actually anti-cancerous. Interesting. And we talked about P53 quite a bit yesterday, and you heard about a nutrient that actually switches on P53. Do you remember what that nutrient is? Who knows what that nutrient is? Didn't you guys listen to Mark Gordon yesterday? Which one? Sorry? Sir? Zinc, yeah. Zinc. Zinc switches on P53. P53 is a tumor suppressor gene. It's a tumor suppressor gene. Now the thing with genes are they are very interesting because P53 is an, anti, is an apoptotic gene. It encourages apoptosis. So when you are young, when you are young, you don't want that much apoptosis because when you have apoptosis, you are losing your cells. So when you are young, your P53 is actually switched off. Your body switches off P53. The older you get, the more your body turns on P53. And the reason your body does that is because as you get older, your risk of cancer increases. So it's in your interest to switch on P53 to suppress cancer cells. But at the same time as you're switching on P53 to suppress cancer cells, you're encouraging apoptosis. So you'll be losing normal cells. That's why you age. So as we age, our body switches on things that protect us against cancer. But it also makes us age. It makes us lose our cells. So if you give hormones, like growth hormone, which increases IGF-1, and IGF-1 will then suppress P53, it suppresses P53, that might not be a good thing for certain people. Certain people that are at risk of cancer need all the P53 they can get. They need to suppress their cancer, their cancer cells. So you need to be very, very careful who you give growth hormone to. And we're not at the stage yet where we can measure these things. You see, we need to measure all these things in each and every person. We need to measure their P53s, all their genes, but we don't have that available yet. All this anti-aging medicine is in its infancy. It's in its infancy. There's so many things we need to measure in each and every person. Each and every person has their own genes, their own response to their genes, the way their genes respond to nutrients, the way their genes respond to hormones. None of that stuff is measurable yet. So we need to be very humble about what we're doing. It freaks me out when people stand up here and act as if they know what they're doing. We're doing physiologic stuff and it's safe and you're doing synergy of hormones. That's all bullshit. It's marketing bullshit. Don't believe it. In fact, don't believe a word I tell you. Do your own research, man. That's what I do. I don't believe a word anybody tells me. I do my own research, and I go to Medline every night when I come home, and I spend three or four hours on Medline doing all the research. And I love this stuff. It stimulates my brain, and then you can communicate with these guys. You look at their research there. The email address is there. And you email them and you say, look, I'm this humble little GP in Sydney, Australia. I know nothing about all this stuff. Can you send me your research? What do you think about this? And then you ask them questions. You set up a conversation. They'll answer you. They're only too happy that someone is speaking to them about their research. They're cloistered in some lab somewhere. No one speaks to them. They're very lonely, sad people. Only too happy that someone like me is communicating with them. And this, that's because those guys are scientists. Sorry, Greg. Those guys are scientists. So hopefully they have no vested interest. <laughs> I'm trying to get a bit of exercise here. You know? They have no vested interest, hopefully, in the outcome of their study. No vested interest. They don't have any interest in the vitamins, in the minerals, in the antioxidants that people are trying to sell you. You see, every time a negative study comes out about vitamins or minerals or antioxidants, Life Extension Foundation goes into damage control. Have you noticed that? Anybody get Life Extension Foundation magazine? You don't? Yeah. So when all those trials came out about vitamins being bad for you and increasing mortality, what did Life Extension do? They tried out all the studies showing vitamins are good for you. 